In the last episode, we introduced link helpers so you could navigate around our app. Now we'll introduce pages for each topic and extract a topic component. Giddy up! We're starting out with the content catalog repo tagged with before episode 014.4. If we look in main.elm, we can see where we've stubbed out our topic view. Let's replace that with a function in a new module. Okay, so we've got a basic topic module. We're just using HTML type and text from the HTML module. And this is pretty straightforward. The only thing that might be weird um, if you're not following along too carefully is this is just uh, an arbitrary parameterized type, right? So we haven't specified what type of message it is since it doesn't matter because we don't emit any. All right, so coming over here, the only thing left to do is import topic. Okay, we will go out of full screen and run the reactor and have a look-see and stuff should still work and it does now we want to introduce a list of topics let's do that we'll come to the topic module and we will add a type alias topic which is a record has an ID field that's an integer has a title field that's a string has a slug field that's a string And then we'll introduce a fake topics function that returns a list of topics. So we have ID1, title elixir, slug elixir, ID2, title elm, slug elm. Okay, so there's our stubbed out list of topics, and we want to render them on the page. So let's change this a little bit. First off, we need all of HTML. We don't need all of it, but this is easier than picking all the things. And our view now takes a list of topics to produce an HTML message. And instead of this text, we'll make a UL. And we will have a list mapped across the topic list item view, which doesn't exist yet, across whatever topics were passed in. And then we'll make a topic list item view, which takes a topic into HTML type message and it is just an li with the text of the topics title okay so we're going to need to pass the fake topics in as an argument when we call the view over here so we will go ahead and do that it's going to be topic about fake topics and let's refresh the page and now on the topics view we have a list of topics We'd like to be able to route to each of these topics by slug, so we'll update our Earl4 and lock4 functions, as well as add a location for viewing a particular topic by slug. So we'll go over to the route, and Earl4, first off, let's add the location. So the location is going to be topic, and then some string, that'll be the slug. And so our Earl4 needs to support that. So topic slug, the URL will be topics, slash slug, sorry about that. And then in the look for function, we'll have this. And will this compile? It will not. And that's because Elm is telling us that we ought to actually have a view for this route. So if we look, this is in the main line 48, that's our view. And it says we don't know how to render the view for this route. So we'll go back to main. And we will duplicate this. So just route.topic slug. And here we'll do a topic that topic uh, view topic, sorry. We'll pass the slug as well as the list of topics across for now. And of course, we can try this out, and the compiler will tell us, hey, there's no such view. So let us make a view topic function in the topic module. View topic takes a topic. Sorry, it takes the slug, which is a string, and a list of topics, and produces an HTML of type message. So it gets the slug and the topics. So we'll find the current topic. We'll do that by using list.filter. Look for a topic whose slug is the same thing as the slug that was passed in, and we'll look across all the topics. And then we'll just take the head of that list. 
And so, oops, sorry. And so since that's list.head, it'll be a maybe. So we'll do a case current topic of, in the event of nothing, we'll have text topic not found. But if it's just a topic, then we'll render some text that says this is the topic.slug topic. Okay, so now if we visit this, it should work. Yep. And so we can explicitly go to topics slash elm, and we can see this is the elm topic. Obviously, we should be linking to it though, so let's come to the topic list item view. And instead of just this text here, we will use the link function that we had from before. It'll link to route.topic, topic.slug, with the text topic.title. And this would almost work, but it's not going to because the link function is in main. And we can't just import main to get access to the link function. So for now, we're going to go to main and we'll take the link function and we'll extract it to some helpers. And so I'm going to go ahead and import them. Import helpers exposing link. And now we'll make a helpers module. It needs the route. It needs HTML with at least HTML, A, and text. It needs HTML.attributes because it needs href. And that should do it. And let's go back to the topic and we'll want to import helpers. Exposing link. And with that, everything should work. And it can't because I've got a message where I should have a message. And it doesn't know about route.topic. What is that now? Oh, right, because this is not route.topic. This is. No, it should be route.topic. Sorry. We need to import route as well. Now it all works. So we'll go to the topics. We can click through into different topics. And we've got nested routes. So in today's episode, we added some nested routes, and we learned that the design for this doesn't preclude us from doing more interesting things. We also extracted a helpers module that screams that it's going to accrete too much unrelated stuff, but we can deal with that when we get there. The biggest problem in this code is that we've basically duplicated the concept of the 404 from root. But is it a problem, really? I think it's a really interesting problem to noodle on for a bit. Also, huge props to Brian Hicks for talking through my first attempt at this with me, which was way more convoluted than made sense. There's going to be a blog post about that coming soon. I hope you enjoyed exploring nested routes. See you soon.